Okay, I think it's 12 o'clock, bang on the dot. So that would be a good time to get this AccuBook update underway. So thank you all so much for joining us. I can see lots of you um, have entered the chat and are watching us um, on here on Zoom. Uh, we're also broadcasting live on YouTube and the recording is going to be posted up later. Um, so let's get kicked off. Thanks so much for joining us. We know it's a really busy time for you all. Um, you're going to hear from a very packed um, set of speakers today. Um, my name is Matt Honeyman. I'm the IG and policy lead here at Accurex, and I've been working on the um, uh, supporting the uh, AccuBook team uh, and the wider vaccine program um, that we're doing through um, AccuBook, which is um, to uh, support the COVID-19 vaccination program in England. Um, I'm also delighted that the following people are going to be joining us. Um, I'll, uh, I'll tee them up as they come on to speak. So after me, you're going to hear from Jacob Haddad, our CEO and co-founder, Donnie Belfon, a product manager, um, and Jen Rose, another product manager here at Accurex, um, who's been leading on the AccuBook work to date. Um, I'll explain why, what Donnie's here for in a second as well, because um, it's his first time on the AccuBook update webinars. Um, and then we're also delighted to be joined by two Accurex and indeed AccuBook users, um, Dr. Michael Smith, and Dr. Shankar Vijay, who are going to be joining me for a panel a little later on. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be giving you some of the key updates on AccuBook and the vaccine program, um, our plans for AccuBook in the future, um, in the very near future, so some very exciting developments that are coming up for you. And we know that lots of you have been asking us about um, because the vaccine program, uh, the wider vaccine program it is changing all the time. Um, and uh, your needs are changing all the time. So we're going to talk about how we're going to be responding to that. Um, and then we're going to talk in that panel session about how AccuBook is helping um, Michael and Shankar use, um, sorry, run their clinics um, for the COVID-19 vaccinations. And then after that, if we do have time, we're going to be answering the very top questions um, that are being asked in the Q&A. So please share your um, questions uh, in the text chat uh, in the usual way on Zoom. Um, we have a couple of Accurex colleagues working in the background who will answer some of the common questions. Um, uh, and then they'll flag, us, uh, flag up anything that we uh, need to address in uh, live on the webinar. So I'm going to be delivering some of the kind of key updates about AccuBook that you need to be aware of and some of the kind of, uh, yeah, really exciting developments that have been going on so far. So um, a very big milestone that we've reached is um, that you've all reached indeed using AccuBook is 1.4 million patients have been booked to date um, using the software. Uh, this is, uh, you know, an incredible achievement that you've all reached and we're very proud to pay a very small part in it. So thank you so much for, um, uh, all of the other positive feedback that we've been receiving. This is just one of um, my favorite quotes um, from a user who is very happy to share it with us, um, talking about some of the benefits of that they've seen using AccuBook. They were able to stand up a clinic in record time. We're getting amazing feedback like this, but also, and, and also, um, uh, feedback of all kinds in terms of helping us to um, flag up things that are changing for you in the program so that we can get to work on uh, bringing you lots of improvements. So that's, um, we're in awe of the work that you're all doing daily across the country on this incredible program. So uh, thank you for sharing that with us um, and, and how we can help you. Um, we'll share kind of some of the results of some of that feedback later in terms of where we're going next. Um, so I also wanted to talk about AccuBook support and what's available to you out there in terms of getting started with the product and everything else. So our incredible support team are here to help. Um, you'll be very familiar with that and the kind of levels of um, uh, support that you get from Accurex and um, across the board and across the platform. Um, you can also get the support you need from the following areas on AccuBook too. Um, if you need access to AccuBook, use this sign up link. Um, if you are new to the product for the first time, um, you use that link and that'll enable you to get set up on the AccuBook um, via the national contract in England. Um, we're running getting started sessions every other day during the week, um, which is where um, myself or some other colleagues run through setup and a few things to think about when you're setting up AccuBook for the first time. There's a little bit of time for Q&A too. Um, so drop in there. Um, you'll get an invite in your first email if you're new to AccuBook and um, setting up as a lead organization. Um, and we can provide other uh, uh, information about how to, to get access to those. Um, on our Facebook group very soon. Speaking of the Facebook group, there's lots of amazing content that gets shared on there all the time. Uh, indeed, that's where the users you'll hear a little 
uh, hear from a little later on in the session um, have been uh, helping others learn about how to how best to integrate AccuBook with all the other things that you need to think about on the vaccine programs. Um, so you can learn from other users there, ask questions there. Um, it's amazing to see uh, people helping each other out, um, grappling with the various challenges that you're facing on the uh, in delivering this vaccine program um, to your populations. And finally, you can get access to our amazing support library on support.accurex.com, where we've got, I think, over 30 articles on AccuBook, all covering all the things you need to know about how to get started with it, how to set up delivery sites, um, start inviting patients and manage your appointments. So um, really recommend that you go there to look for what you need um, first. So moving on to some big updates um, about the program. Um, uh, sorry, about um, AccuBook and the platform. Um, this is a big change that's coming up uh, that you need to be aware about. So uh, in general, AccuBook SMS link uptake is really good. Um, we're seeing a lot of patients taking up bookings through their links, very high levels of take up, up to 72% of uh, patients, I believe, are taking up booking through their links. Um, you'd be aware that patients to date have been receiving links with the form book.nhs.me. Um, with a unique identifier afterwards, uh, which is essentially a unique link dedicated to that patient. Um, and that's where they book their vaccine um, appointment. Um, but you should know that we're making this change to our booking links tomorrow. Um, we trailed it in the AccuBook update email last Friday. Um, the reason uh, behind um, the work that we've done with colleagues at NHS Digital to make this change, and they've given us access to this form of link, which is now going to be accurex.thirdparty.nhs.uk. The reason we're doing it, as I say, is um, a lot of advice to spot genuine messages in texts and centres on looking for nhs.uk. So we're trying to better align with some of that um, uh, advice that is, is, is out there. Um, we will be monitoring click through and successful booking rates because we know that the most important thing on this vaccine programme is that people do take up their bookings when they are invited. Um, it's all about maximising trust. So be aware that this change um, that will be visible to your patients from 4pm tomorrow um, that's the current due date and um, we'll let you know if that changes but we don't expect it to um, so Friday the 29th 4 p.m that's when the kind of change um, of the form of links is due to come in um, so as we say it's all about maximizing trust which brings us on um, nicely to this um, which is about um, uh, the, the wider uh, vaccine program and how it's absolutely critical um, to maintain trust in it so we know that people are worried and scared about the virus and we've all heard heartbreaking stories of how people um, have exploited that uh, that anxiety and the the, the um, desperation for the vaccine in some cases um, and so that's why uh, so for example through sms and text scams where people are asked to enter payment details um, uh, to take up the vaccine but as we know the nhs is offering it offers all of its services, including this one, free at the point of use. So that's why the public information provided to patients needs to be as accurate as possible. Um, and so we're monitoring what's going on in the kind of wider, wider environment as best we can and proactively reporting examples of, of any errors in this to the NH, to NHS England's team. Last week, um, we became aware of um, uh, a mistake on the One Show's watchdog segment where they informed people to wait for letters um, as that was the uh, source through which people were going to be invited, indeed letters and phone calls. It wasn't mentioning the SMSs that as we know, um, hundreds of thousands indeed over a million um, have, have received directly from their GP practices or PCNs um, through AccuBook um, across this programme. So we're going to be proactively record, re, um, reporting other examples like this to NHS England's media team just so they're aware and they can help support the messaging for you on that. Um, just if you want any help on that, just please send any examples to media at accurex.com. That's a media monitoring box that we've set up just so that we can be as responsive as possible for you on this. And finally here, I just want to thank um, offers of pe that people have given to speak to media to provide them with the context on your vaccine program. Um, uh, we know that uh, we've got quite a few GPs who are ready to kind of step in as we know that you're all acutely aware um, of the need to maximize trust so that patients in your populations take up the life-saving offer of this vaccine. And so finally, I just wanted to say a little bit about 
um, vaccine clinic visits. So before the pandemic, um, we at AccuRx prided ourselves in how often we were out and about with practices um, so that we can understand um, you know, the context that our software is being used in and the challenges that um, uh, you, our users, face all the time um, and what we can help you with. And rightly, we've been priding ourselves on the opposite um, since the start of the pandemic. We've been doing weekly calls with users on Fridays where the whole team join uh, and hear uh, uh, about bits of primary care, including in recent weeks, the vaccine clinics that you're all running. Um, and we can only build, uh, and this is all because we can only build good products if we understand, um, as I say, your challenges. Um, but unfortunately, there's no substitute for conversation and observation, even physically distanced ones. So um, vaccine clinics are something we'd really like to do more of. Um, and we've been doing a couple in recent times. Um, it gives us an opportunity to learn about how your vaccine clinics are running and to learn about how to improve AccuBook and to help you get the most out of AccuBook as well. We, we can do that on the day with you. So if you'd like us to visit or have volunteering opportunities for a member of the AccuRx team, please get in touch on this email address um, and send your offer there. Um, of course, we'll follow all infection control requirements and government guidance um, on this, um, and uh, especially in terms of staying local as well. So most of the AccuBook, uh, AccuRx team are based around London, um, but virtual visits would be really welcome too. So um, just, uh, yeah, if you'd like us to um, to visit you, please, and, and see your vaccine clinic in action, please let us know. That'd be fantastic. So now um, you've heard enough from me for now. So now I'm going to introduce um, Jacob Haddad, our CEO and co-founder, who's going to talk to you about some of the exciting product improvements that have been made to AccuBook to date. Thanks a lot, Matt, um, and thanks very much, everyone, for joining on, I'm sure, a busy Thursday. Um, can you jump to the next slide, please? So we wanted to give you a quick update on some of the um, improvements we're making. Not going to go through all of them because there are loads. Um, people might have seen this page. Uh, we've linked to it in newsletters before, um, but every we're sort of on an almost daily basis just posting improvements up there. Um, you can expand any of the days and see what we've we put in recently. So to avoid emailing you every single day with updates, you can go and check there. Um, I'm going to jump into sharing my screen just so that I can show you. Matt, can you just um, end your screen share, please? Um, and then I will show you some of them. So I'm not going to go through all of them because there are quite a lot, but I just wanted to show some of the highlights and some, some, some of the improvements that people have found most helpful. Um, so people should be familiar with this view. Um, so we've made a few improvements into how you can set up and manage sessions. So the first is that you can um, now run uh, your service in a multi-site way. Um, so you can invite other practices as before, um, but practice can be invited to multiple places. And what that does is that then gives the patient a choice of locations to attend. So if you've got multiple organizations vaccinating, let's say you've got four PCNs in your area sharing capacity amongst themselves, each PCN delivery site can add all of the practices in the area and patients will be able to book in there. Um, we've also much more recently added, although you'll need to contact our support team to have it turned on uh, and the ability to have multiple sites uh, within a grouping so for example um, if you're delivering uh, Pfizer at a hub site and you're delivering AstraZeneca at a practice site um, you need to be able to manage those separately and have separate locations that patients go to the right place so you can set up and manage multiple sites as I said for that feature you'll need to contact our support team to turn that on um, one other final page to uh, change to quickly tell you about on here is you can now um, there's a lot more flexibility around editing sessions so if you want to edit a session you just need to unpublish it um, and then you can make it longer or increase capacity um, if there's no patients booked in, you can make it shorter or reduce capacity. But if there are some patients booked in, um, and for example, you need to make it shorter, um, what you'll need to do is unpublish the session, cancel the patients that overlap with the, the times you want to remove. Um, some, you know, the SMS, the patients with the mobile can be canceled by SMS. The others you'll need to call up and cancel um, and then get in touch with a support team and we, and we can shorten it, but we just need to make sure that there aren't going to be any patients who have bookings that, that are missed out there. So there's a few of the changes that have gone into the session flow. Um, 
to quickly take you through a few of the changes on the invite side. Um, so people will probably familiar with uh, the limit on the number of invites that you can send. So we used to limit you to sending 200% of your available slots um, where, we, where we counted in that 200% sort of any pending invites in the last seven days and any invites you're about to send. We now, we then moved it to counting any invites in the last three days and it's now invites in the 24 hours, in the past 24 hours. So it's a lot more flexible there. And we know some sites were hitting issues with um, not being able to send out enough SMS invites as they were waiting for patient responses. Um, but we have kept that limit in and in terms of you can invite double the number of patients as you have available slots. Um, and we include patients who've been invited by SMS only in the past 24 hours. So patients without a mobile number, they don't count towards that limit. The reason we've got that limit is just where there's multiple sites in uh, you know, sh sharing capacity um, to avoid them all uploading too many and then too many patients hitting um, there being no availability. So we track the the percentage of the time that a patient clicks on their link and there's no availability left and, and we're monitoring that and making sure it's not uh, not too high. We also added in this booking flow ability to add notes. Um, so you can, uh, if you've got say an admin team centrally calling out patients, you can say when you called them or any um, needs that a patient has or maybe more context around why they haven't responded or they're declining. Um, and then anyone else viewing that patient's invites will be able to see that. We've made the decline flow a lot clearer. So cancel invite is if you don't want a patient to be able to book anymore. Um, um, you want to essentially deactivate their, their link. Um, whereas decline invite lets you go through um, and mark that patient as declining, which could be because they don't want the vaccine or they're contraindicated. And it could also be because they've they've had it elsewhere. So there's a list of reasons that, that can be selected here. And then that goes back to EMIS. Um, if you're using system one, it goes back to system one in some sites. We're currently testing that and we'll be increasing that over the next uh, a couple of weeks. Um, if you're a system one site and need, need that sooner, then, then do let us know and we can turn it on for you sooner. Um, We've also on the invite flow, um, you can now add an individual patient where you don't have their NHS number. So if you're vaccinating, for example, opportuni opportunistically members of staff um, who don't know their NHS number, you can search for them here. You need to get an exact match from the patient demographic service from the spine um, in terms of the details. So for example, it needs to be the postcode that they are registered um, at with their GP practice. And then you can, um, find a patient and book them in individually. And then finally, to jump onto some improvements, or some of the improvements made on the book list. So people have probably noticed we don't show you all the sessions in the past because that was getting becoming quite a long list. If you do want to see them, you can tick this box here and, and you'll see all those past sessions. Um, but by default, they're not shown. So you can jump straight into today's sessions. Um, we now show you the number of patients that's marked as arrived on the day. So you can go to this view and more easily keep track of how many patients have arrived. Um, and then if we go into the list, um, you can now um, filter or search, search the list by patient. So um, if you've got a patient turn up, um, you can search for them uh, and we'll filter down and find them in the list so you can find them more easily, especially if you, this list gets really long and you've got hundreds of patients. Um, and we also show and it's not in this list because these aren't patients registered at real practices, but we do show um, now in this list which practice the patient is registered with rather than invited by. If we don't have that data, which is what's happening here, we show where they're invited by, um, but uh, where we do have that data, which we sh you know, should do in your case if we're using real patients, um, you'll be able to see the practice they're registered at. So those are a few of the few of the many improvements. As I said, there is that page um, that we keep up to date with all of the updates and improvements going in. Um, and please do keep feeding back improvements you want to see. Um, it helps us both be aware of how to improve the product, but also prioritize things because obviously there's a huge amount of um, 
areas to improve and ways we want to improve the product. But hearing the sort of most urgent things does help us prioritize what we do first. So those are the ones I wanted to quickly go through. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Jen, who's going to show us what's coming soon to AccuBook. Jen's our product manager leading on AccuBook. So Jen, over to you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, Matt, do you mind sharing the slides again um, to run through? Perfect, that's great, thanks. Um, so as Jacob mentioned, there's definitely a, uh, a lot that we want to do and uh, a lot of areas that we know we want to improve AccuBook, but the ones I mainly wanted to talk about today is kind of uh, grouped into this idea of cohort management. Um, so this covers kind of second bookings as well as being able to prioritize different groups of patients for different reason. Um, so next slide, please. Great. So we, we know that you need ways to quickly get your patients booked in for their second vaccinations. And that's something you can't currently do with AccuBook, um, as well as being able to prioritize those cohorts that you invited first. So your first, first and second cohorts, um, making sure that you can identify those people quickly and prioritize them to get booked in either for their first or for their second jabs. Um, so there's a few different things we're doing to help with this and make sure that this is a nice slick process for you. So next slide. The first of those is work that's currently underway uh, to integrate with NIMS data. So that's the National Immunization Management Service. So this means when you upload patients, we'll automatically be able to put them into the right buckets as such. So if you upload them and they haven't had any of their jabs, then great, you can go ahead and invite them for their first jabs. Um, if they've already had that first vaccination, then you can put them into a bucket of to be invited for their second. Um, so this means essentially that you don't have to do that hard work of figuring out who's had their jabs or not. We can do that by pulling that straight from NIMS. Um, this also means if you haven't used AccuBook for first vaccinations and getting people booked in for their first, then you can still use it and upload them straight and they'll go straight in to be invited for their second. So that kind of idea of switching over to a new system should be nice and easy because we'll put them in the right place for you. Um, and what this enables us to do is allow you to invite patients for their second booking. So next slide, Matt. Um, so this is a screenshot of a dashboard that we're currently building, which will allow you to see patients on how many weeks have elapsed since they had their first vaccination so that you can prioritize them accordingly. Um, so you can see here there's kind of less than nine weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks. Um, so you can click into any one of these segments to see those patients that are in that list. Um, and then if you click on the next page, you can then invite them to second vaccination. So you can see this kind of new patient status that we have here of awaiting second invite. So you can either do this on an individual basis or in bulk. So multi-select the whole group of people in that list uh, and invite them for their second. And then that happens exactly the same as inviting for their first. Um, we'll invite them to any kind of live clinic that you have that's published that ma that crucially mass matches the vaccine that they had for their first booking. So again, that's data we get back from NIMS. So if you, for example, book them into a Pfizer session because that's what you thought you were going to get for the day, which is something we've heard from people and I know has happened to quite a few of you, um, but you've actually got AstraZeneca on the day, um, that's okay because we're going to get back from NIMS the vaccine that they had for their first vaccination and match it. So we will invite them to any then matching AstraZeneca clinics for them to book into for their second. So to make sure they get the same vaccine for both of their jabs. Um, we're also going to allow you to set up a clinic just for second bookings. So you know, there's a bit of concern about, obviously, if you've got lots of links live for people getting booked in for their first, you want to make sure that there's some of those are, are kind of reserved for second bookings. So we'll make sure you can do that on explicit clinics as well. And we know that this isn't the only thing on your mind at the moment. You also need to make sure you're prioritizing those first cohorts to make sure they're kind of mopped up and done before you move on to the next ones. Um, so if you click next slide, Matt. What we'll be building is a way in which for you to kind of tag groups of patients with their cohort. So this is either, uh, as you can see here, kind of bulk selecting a group of patients who have already been invited and then add them to a cohort once they're in the system. Or if you click on the next slide, Matt, 
when you upload a new list, uh, being able to add them to a different cohort at that point as well. So you can see here, there's um, you've uploaded some people, you can group them into cohort one, cohort co two, cohort three, and then being able to see a dashboard similar to the one I showed earlier for second bookings, but actually being able to see, great, these are the people in cohort one that are still left to invite. Click in there and you'll be able to see those people. Um, one of the things we've also got in progress is being able to resend an invite. So even if those people you've already invited for their first jabs, you'll be able to resend an invite to nudge them or equally manually book them in um, if you're talking to them over the phone, for example. So as you can see, there's a lot for us to do. Um, and we, what we'll be doing is releasing different parts of this as and when it's ready, as you've seen us do um, with previous updates. Uh, but you'll have a way in which to do all of your second bookings and tagging cohorts by mid-February. So that's before that kind of 12-week gap for your first uh, for your first patients is going to come, come live. Um, so that's what I wanted to run through. Uh, I'm sure if you've got questions, we can answer those in the Q&A. But I think now I'm going to hand over to Donny to give you a bit of an update um, on the recording side. Cool, yeah. Thanks, Jen. Um, so we've been working very closely with AccuBook thus far to sort of come up with an accurate, safe, and reliable recording product. Um, we haven't finalized it yet, and there's nothing yet ready uh, to be tested live, but we um, do have some interesting videos that we're keen to show everybody. I'm just going to ask uh, Matt if you could relinquish control. Mm -hmm. Should Thank be you. off now. Perfect. Great, so I'll just share this video quickly first and then run through a little bit of what our design thinking is and then update with some timelines after. Just because I can't see the screen, is this full screen for everyone? Yeah, it looks good, Donnie. Perfect. So running through, we're really designing for speed, but accuracy and reliability. We've sort of truncated the different sections of the vaccine record into um, areas of focus. First off being the screening record, being able to track any sort of cautions or exclusions um, and being able to say no to all. Just that allowance that they are clinically suitable and then obtaining consent. Once that's saved, it'll actually truncate itself so that it doesn't take up too much speed while also being able to build in um, from the staff table and a nice summary before going into the vaccine record. Moving down from there, you'll be able to record and pull in the batch details. Um, if there isn't one selected, you can add one right in there, but there will be a sort of admin area where you can update that information uh, ahead of time before the actual point of recording. Saving that will also truncate that record. Uh, at the end, we'll have a submit form as well and some clarity around that each each sort of vaccine record has been uh, submitted. And then at the end of the day, obviously a push will happen to NIMS so that that's updated um, for the start of the next either dose or just to the NIMS record for a full, full dose of both. I'm gonna stop sharing now, return here. Just around some timelines. Um, we are waiting for our insurance date, which is hopefully gonna be in the next, or the first half of next week. From there, we hope to be in some clinics piloting this product uh, by the second week of February. Um, but all throughout that, up until that point, we'll be conducting a lot of research. So if you do have any um, opportunities for us to sort of visit your clinic, use that link that Matt uh, shared earlier. And yeah, from there, we're excited to get this out to you. I think I'm handing it back to you, Matt, right? Yeah, thank you very much, Donnie. That's super exciting. Um, there's a couple of questions coming in um, that uh, we're going to answer for you. So just to um, clarify um, about the whether this would be an alternative to Pharma Outcomes or Pinnacle um, that you're currently using for vaccine recording at the moment. That's very much the case, um, subject to um, being approved, um, going through the NHS digital assurance process. And we shared last night um, that we've been invited to supply, which I think will go out to ourselves and other suppliers. And we've been given a spec, uh, a specification against which we're building. Um, Unless Jacob and Donny, you want to add anything to that, I think that's, that's that's the clear message on that. So, subject to that and testing going live in a couple of weeks, um, that's that's what we're uh, working towards. So that's really exciting. Um, we can come back to some other questions, maybe more detailed ones, um, in the Q and A at the end. Um, but I'm going to share my screen again, just uh, just like one of you 
to confirm that you can see it as I have done. Um, and now we're going to um, we're going to go into our user panel. So um, Michael and Shankar, if you are able to turn on your cameras, I cannot see you um, as I'm sharing my screen, but I'm sure you're uh, you're going to be able to. Um, I think we're going to um, yeah going to jump into this now. So um, we're essentially very lucky to have an amazingly active user um, uh, community, um, especially on our Facebook group, um, which is where we've drawn our two Facebook panelists who are here to share how they use, sorry, our two panelists. Um, uh, they're, they're all over the place as well. Um, uh, they're here to share how they use AccuBook to run their vaccine clinics and programs locally. Um, so Dr. Michael Smith is going to go first. He's a GP and PCN Deputy Director in Claypath in Durham. So um, after him, we'll hear from Dr. Shankar Vijay, um, his Ealing CCG GP clinical lead. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to do have a couple of, um, you're, you're going to talk through your, your um, lessons from learning AccuBook in about three minutes was the task we set you. We've got a little bit more time. Um, but uh, I'm going to be controlling your slides as well. So, um, Michael, are you ready? I'm ready. Can you see me? Okay. Yeah, I can. Really nice to really nice to talk to you. Okay. So, next slide, if that's okay. I feel like yeah. Chris Whitty. Um, <laughs> so, the this is just a brief overview of how we use AccuBook. I mean, as uh, Jacob's described, it can be used differently. So, what we do is we have um, each practice in our in our PCN grouping, and also people from the local trusts, so health frontline healthcare workers, all um, get booked in by into AccuBook via a central PCN vaccine organizer. So, to try and prevent one practice going ahead of the cohorts that the other, others are at, we kind of centrally coordinate that. Um, or I should say I centrally coordinate that. But what I've loved is that AccuBook makes it so easy for me to actually do that. Um, so I just get some spreadsheets and then I just put them together and upload them onto AccuBook. So we just progress through the slide. Then once we've um, once we've got it, once we've got all the lists, we put them into AccuBook and then we go from there to actually invite our, our patients. So one of the things we've loved about it, uh, next slide, yeah, that's great. One of the things we love about AccuBook is the SMS feature. So uh, we've got, we've been doing a lot of work in the run up to the vaccination program to get accurate mobile numbers for our patients. And as a consequence, we're seeing a, a good percentage of patients booking in via SMS. So we're probably seeing of those who've got mobile numbers, probably seeing maybe 70 or 80% booking in that way. Uh, so that means probably about 50 or 60% of our patients in total are booking in via SMS, which saves a huge amount of time for our admin teams. Uh, we've, I sent out 250 SMSs as part of a batch um, on Tuesday. Within five minutes, 54 patients were booked in and, two, and 200 of them had booked in within the hour. I was amazed at how fast they're going through it, but the user interface on, for the patient is very, is very straightforward. Um, so what we do once we've gone through the SMS patients is um, our, we use the Accurex invite list screen to have the patients who need to be manually manually called and the patients who have not responded to the text messages and reception essentially go one by one through them and phone them from that screen. So they're not going in and out of EMIS or system one, they're just working from that one screen. Um, we actually do it all within the one PCN, it was one practice, sorry, that are actually doing the inviting, but you could easily do that across a PCN with different, um, different practices doing the inviting because you can filter that way. Um, in, the first, in the early days, it was genuinely spreadsheet hell, as I'm sure many of those who are watching can understand. Um, and we've, we're now at a point where we're pretty much entirely avoiding that, which is just lovely. So next slide, please. So just a few final comments in this very, very, very brief presentation. Um, we've, we've really appreciated the fact that um, with AccuBook, we're able to kind of export patients quickly and uh, that's allowed some innovations that we've been doing. I've developed a QR scanner thing to get people in the pinnacle, which thankfully we may no longer need once um, once Accurex have released their AccuTrack solution. Um, but the, the ability to innovate has been really helpful and helped us get a nice slick uh, net, uh, vaccination center going. The other thing I've really appreciated um, is the engagement and the improvements that have come from Accurate Stick and Fast. So uh, those who um, have engaged with the support service via the chat, it's really good. I actually had a call from Jacob in the early days when we, have, we were having some queries and that, that sort of outreach is the stuff that we've, I've never had from EMIS or System 1. So it, it's really been appreciated. And I think it's built into that mentality that, that these guys are in, are in the trenches with us, getting this done and getting the patients vaccinated. And, and that's really, that's where we're really 
really appreciate that. Um, and I think it also shows that they've got that same primary care mentality. I think big organizations, big hospital trusts are struggling with the mass vaccination centers in some places. And I think that's because they just don't move quite as nimbly as small practices and PCNs do. And I, I feel like we're seeing the same thing in our software suppliers, which is really appreciated. So thank you guys for all of your hard work. Yes. Thank you so much, Michael, and thank you also for being so open to that to that two-way dialogue. It's it's how we can uh, learn and improve everything that we're the work working on for you. So um, I'm gonna come, we're gonna come back to some of those themes and some of those um, uh, really interesting uh, comments that you've made, Michael. Uh, I'm delighted to introduce our next panelist. Um, who's Dr. Shankar Vijay, um, who's uh, one of the GP clinical leads in Ealing CCG. Shankar, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, great. the floor okay, is so yours. First, okay, great. So thanks for the opportunity to share our experience. Um, so firstly, I'm speaking on behalf of my other colleagues, Alex Fragianos and Vijay Taylor, who dialed in to but it's us three. And this is um, our rollout of my multi-site within a week, literally from decision to it being live, how to do it in a week. Um, next slide. So why, so next slide. Yeah, so tell a bit about ourselves. Eden CG, it's in London. Um, so first of all, Jacob and the team, if you're welcome to visit us, um, we're just a, a few miles away down the road. So we we'll look forward to seeing you. But with about a bit about us, 450,000 patients, 75 practices, all of them apart from one on system one. We had an established system of cross booking into a hub on system one uh, that all our practices knew about. We have eight PCNs with two um, delivery sites. Um, so why did we switch to Acubook? We needed to up ramp our volumes. And actually, I'm, I'm really glad that Mike Smith is um, on this um, user journey as well, because he also played part of our decision making with his QR codes. So we wanted to reduce the workload for our practices to get more patients in. And then thankfully, the multi-site functionality came on board exactly at the right time. And then we did take a chance on what is the journey with Accurex and AccuBook. You know, we've saw about NIMS integration and then AccuTrack now we hear about, and then the management of the second doses. So those were our triggers for why we wanted to do a switch. Next slide. <clears throat> so how did we do the switch? Getting 75 practices on board within a week um, is not easy. We actually started with the patient experience. Um, I think you can get lost with the back end and, and upload in and, and people can switch off. So what I did is I screencasted um, a video of literally the patient experience on a phone, exactly how we'd get it. And we presented that first to our practices and actually they got it. it, it you know, it just, it, the product um, became really clear and we made it very clear. This is not just about the smartphone generation that the product controls also the manual bookable side as well. So that was our key point to go with the patient experience experience first. Next slide. Then, then we got them to think about the team effect. So this is one of our sites, which again, Accurate, you're welcome to visit. These are our vaccinators. If all our practices didn't switch to Acubook and pump the patients through, what are this team going to do? Just twiddle their thumbs and stand for pictures? No. So we needed all our practices to get the bigger picture of how they had to play their part to fill up our vaccinations. And we did put a little bit of pressure on them to think who hadn't done it and who hadn't accepted the vaccine delivery site invites. Next slide. <clears throat> Um, and then how to explain the concept of capacity and slots. I'm a visual person. I had, we had to explain that we have this boat. We had to get all of our 75 practices onto them, all their patients. They all couldn't just crowd on and upload all at the same time and then get a bad experience and then say, this is awful and we don't understand it all. So we had to explain the concept of capacity in sessions, but also that it wasn't just the IT company AccuBook putting these limits in. This is about the patient experience. If the clicks don't work and you can't find a slot, will they use this product again? So we all had to understand that and play our part as a team to get our patients on. Next slide. Um, so the last bit, so this is the uh, part of the team, so Alex and Vijay, uh, who's also dialed in. So what do we recommend? Commit to the change. We, we thought we needed to do this in the week. Whatever happens, we will do it. Put a date in. And I think then think about your user training needs. So I, I, I break it into three parts. The practice staff uploading and, and manually booking the hub staff arriving patients and, and also using some of the great stuff that Mike's um, did with QR codes. And then um, the, the service leads, how do you get the leads to understand about sessions, capacity, 
and um, all of that functionality. So we, we tailor some of the training. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there, but obviously the AcroX community um, Facebook page is really useful. Probably our most technical challenge was around the CSV file creation to really get that right. And Alex um, played a big part in leading on that. And then about the support, we need to give them support. And this is our out of hours photo where literally have to, when, when the hubs are busy during the day to do some of those installations of just the toolbar, we, had, we just couldn't take computers offline. We have to go uh, out of hours to do some of that. We created our own local WhatsApp group. Yep, there's lots of WhatsApp groups on there. <laughs> so this is another one. So we convinced them to join another one and support each other as users to users to help everyone learn the journey. And we see this as ongoing because we're really excited by the functionality that um, AccuBook could be rolling out. Um, we understand that that will mean further training and further engagement with all our teams to embrace it early and get the most out of that experience. So lastly, I just want to say thanks um, literally from all of us in Elin. We, we do really thank the AccuRx and AccuBook team working around the clock. We also really want to thank Michael Smith as the other co-presenter. We, we have posted, we think he should be GP of the year for next year, this year. So if you do think he should be nominated for his QR codes, please do think of that too. Thank you. <clears throat> Brilliant. Um, so thank you, Shankar. And um, thank you, Mike, as well. Um, yeah, awesome presentations and really interesting and insightful. I'm sure people ha have found a lot um, to take, a lot of learning to take for, uh, for how they're using AccuBook in their vaccine program. I'd really like to kind of um, kick off a discussion with you two, if that's okay. Um, and I'm just going to um, stop sharing my screen so that uh, we can see each other, if that's all right. Um, yeah, and I'd like to invite my fellow AccuRx colleagues as well um, to, uh, to to throw in any questions too. Um, so, well, yeah, my first one is 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 kind of for 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 um, for both of you. It's about like AccuBet kind of sitting in the middle of this um, process of uh, knowing that you've got patients and vaccines that you that you have the supply of that you'd like to get to them, all the way through to that kind of you know happy moment of them receiving the dose being observed, if if that's still um, necessary. Um, and I guess like what you think, what you thought about before, and then we'll come on to afterwards and Mike's nifty QR codes um, after. But yeah, what do you kind of think about um, before you kind of upload stuff to AccuBook? Jean, could you want to go? Um, okay, I mean, with us, it's challenging. We've got 75 practices, two sites, different demographics, different rates of uptake. So in part of our area, lower smartphone penetration, whereas other areas, high penetration, and also patient preference between the two sites. So it is challenging. Um, there's probably no right way to do it. Um, and we've probably agreed a dual approach where we, we give a steer to our practices about what to upload. On a we start to get into a daily cycle. And then we may do targeted approaches where certain areas, certain practices are suggested to upload a bit more. So that's how, that's how that approach is. And then also to respect, like, like we said, this is both ends of the spectrum. It's got the automation, but it's also your, effectively your dashboard to manage your manual bookable. So it, it can do the whole spectrum um, of that. And to promote that we don't, um, we ensure in, that we don't do inequality. We don't leave the manual bookables behind. We need to keep track of both. <clears throat> So I would echo echo that we, we're in a slightly different position where a where a much smaller PCN grouping with a smaller number of practices. So we've gone for a more centralised approach. Um, but obviously, Shankar's approach I think will work much better at a larger scale. So we we will ask practices to send us the lists that we want to then send out to patients, and then we prioritise them in a similar way to what Shankar described of trying to get them in order of cohorts, but then also trying not to rush it to make sure the manual patients don't get left behind as they are likely to be the ones without digital services. So we don't really want to create that digital inequality where people who've got smartphones get better access to healthcare. So we, we really make a lot of effort to, to make sure that happens. And I would encourage others to do the same. Mm. Yeah, so we're really interested in, in what your, um, uh, your, your efforts on digital inclusion as well, um, as we're kind of uh, mindful that we do need to support all of those patients um yeah and and so i guess you've you've talked through how, how you use acubook in those two presentations um what about um yeah afterwards at the moment when you have to use pinnacle and, and maybe other systems um 
uh, on the day. What's what? What have you been working on, Mike? Because uh, can you introduce your QR codes a little bit? Because I think people will will be will have had their interest peaked if they haven't been following our Facebook group. So um, it was actually somebody else in one of the Facebook groups mentioned using barcodes, and I tried to create some barcodes in Excel, but the version of Excel that we've got on our office computers is so old it wouldn't allow me to do it. So I had to develop something a bit more novel, um, which allows you to just take the CSV file from the clinic list and convert that into some QR codes. And with some helpful suggestions along the way from people in the forum, um, we've, we've kind of got it down to a bit of a slick solution where you get some stickers that you put onto the cards that patients take home with them, which have the QR codes on. So it, it, part of the problem with Pinnacle, as those of you who use it will know, is when you enter a patient's date of birth, it has to be in a very specific format. It has to be 25 dash and then the then the month in three letter format dash the year in four digit format and that's not a very natural thing to type into a computer so it slows slows down the process quite a lot so the qr code allows you to just very quickly get the patients on boarded a lot of areas are pre-populating pinnacle with the patients ahead of time to try and speed up that process but we found that that was adding a whole extra layer of, of work for admin so again using the qr codes means that as a patient comes through the door i as a vaccinator immediately just scan them on using the the QR codes to get the date of birth and NHS number. It looks them up and then you can get going on Pinnacle. Once you've got your head around Pinnacle, then it, you know you can get you can get through it reasonably fast, but it's not the most intuitive system in the world. So uh, I, I look forward to AccuTrack being at our site. Yeah, it's very exciting what, um, what Donnie and the team are working on. Um, yeah, so I, if my colleagues would like to uh, jump in, please do. Um, otherwise, I'd uh, if, if I should also um, say some people are asking questions in the chat for um, our two guests. Um, please continue to do that. Um, if you're both happy, I'd, I'm going to share some of those um, with you. An easy one for you, Shankar, I think, because um, I think you've already done this. Um, but Shankar, would you be happy to share your patient experience video? Where can people yeah, it's, it's already on YouTube. Everything we do, we upload into YouTube. Um, but my fear, though, is that you guys will keep changing it. So I have to keep redoing it, which is fine. It's fine as long as you keep us track of the changes. I can see the link is going to change. But I do think it's, it's a great um, way to show the experience. So it's on YouTube. Um, we can share the links, I'm sure, after this. <coughs> <Cool>. <coughs> Jacob, I think you're on mute, but would you like to ask a question? Thank you, Matt. Um, yeah, I've got I've got a question for both Shankar and Michael, which is one of the th um, sort of most common requests we get from sites, and particularly the sites that haven't moved over to AccuBook, is being able to restrict certain, being able to restrict sessions by practices or restrict the amount of availability by um, each practice. Um, we've purposefully avoided that so far because we're really worried about putting too much too many constraints in the system and then ending up in a position where some practices have patients trying to book and just you know get, hitting their availability and some practices um, have unused invites and try to leave it to um, PCNs to coordinate amongst themselves how many patients to invite at once so both from a, a, a sort of smaller PCN delivery network and a much larger PCN delivery network um, I'd be really interested in hearing how you manage that locally and make sure people are uploading sort of a fair number of, of patients across the board. So from a smaller network, it, it is, as I say, we're, we're more of a central command and control approach of, of assertively our reaching to practices to say, send us your lists. And if somebody's falling behind, we're trying to pull them along. And if somebody sends us a very large list that's longer than we're likely to get through, then we don't send invites to all of those patients. And we're just very honest about the fact that we share it out equally among the, the, the different practices. So that, that's one approach. And it sounds like Shank has got a different approach, which sounds equally good in a different, different way. No, so for us, this is a really top functionality need for us. Um, we, we're struggling without it because um, um, the problem, obviously, in the live system. So we've we've done speed challenges, which is can we toggle something live and get a patient in before, get a staff member booked in before a patient books in. Last night, Alex was here and, and he um, fed back that um, in that one toggle, 30 patients flooded in and booked and they had to manually call them each patient to counsel them. So we almost have to try and keep a manual system on system one just for that. And, and actually it is stressful um, um, how to manage those spares at the end if you can't have a system of a restricted list. So I, got, I know you guys have got the bigger things like the NIMS and the AccuTrack and everything, but this is one functionality we would really, really find useful. <clears throat> Shankar, that's really helpful. And just to clarify there, because I think there's there's probably two separate things we're thinking of. So yeah. I think the having 
capacity that's only for manual booking so you can put people in at the end of the day is definitely something we're aware of like, like, like you talk about um what we're what we're also interested in though is for the patients who are self booking so not for the sort of end of the day ones but just the capacity each day um how you make sure that practices are inviting so if you don't have one practice send out a huge list and then all their patients take the invites and, and others don't We've, we've done things like WhatsApp um, cascades. In Northwest London, they've also started an email process where there's a central email booking system as well. Um, but I think it's definitely something that we need to develop further. Um, and there's two, two bits of the system and then also the functionality of how to manage the numbers and counting so you don't get the counts wrong. Um, so I think it's still iterative at the moment. Good. I, I'd add a slightly smaller PCN scale for those manual bookings at the end of the day. We try to keep the number of patients outstanding as close to zero as possible when we actually reach the day of a vaccination click clinic day, because we're doing them maybe one a week at the moment or two a week. We can we can accomplish that. So when we actually untoggle a session, there's, there's almost nobody left who hasn't responded. So the chance of somebody booking in is extremely small. But I, I agree with that, Chanka. That is, that is useful functionality if you're in a larger site and there's that risk of having a, a very short session flooded. That makes a lot of sense. Th thanks both. Yeah, thank you both. Um, so I'm just going to go through some more of the questions that are coming in in the chat. Um, and there's one about the, um, uh, the point of care data and where that goes. So I'm gonna throw that over to Donny as I understand you'd like to answer it live. So question yeah. from Deborah is, will your point of data um, point of care data going to local health information exchanges or only into NIMS? Cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, so for our first iteration, it will be going straight into NIMS. Um, I think there's some ongoing uh, conversation with NHSD about handling that information to the EPR, to the patient record. Um, we are designing a product in a way that will be able to copy back that information if NHSD doesn't, um, doesn't come up with another solution um retroactively so it'll always be an option if that's the way we have to go to but at least at the beginning it'll only go into NIMS. Jacob did you want to add anything there? Um yeah just to say also I know some areas have sort of additional requirements of where data needs to go um that aren't on the central requirements so there, there's going to be an export that will you'll be able to um very easily pull down that data with NHS numbers, obviously, um, dose sequence, you know, which which vaccine and so on, and, and upload it into the relevant system. If you've got additional requirements in in your area, yeah, and that that export will be uh, included in our first release as well. Very exciting, uh, Donny. I'm going to ask you another one about um, uh, timelines. Uh, I think that was something that Gregory Clark asked about. Just reiterate the timelines that we're thinking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're waiting for an assurance date, uh, likely to be in the first half of next week. And then from there, uh, hope to be user facing or product facing uh, by mid February or the second week of February. Um, once we have a better idea of uh, the product and, and how it's working out, we'll then release it out to the larger community. Cool. Very exciting. I suppose updates will be communicated via that same a notion page that public notion page so we won't keep that a secret from anyone <laughs> nice um uh, so i uh, there's a question here about how people are using a, a question about, about whether it's possible to use acubook on the day on an ipad um for to be able to mark people as arrive at the front door i think jen you uh, will confirm that that's possible should be possible yeah, definitely. So the uh, AccuBook is all kind of web based. Um, so you can log in with your normal kind of uh, toolbar login on the web um, and then be able to mark patients up as arrived. I visited a clinic last week uh, and saw they were doing this. Someone had it on a phone, uh, two people on iPads and laptops as well, uh, so, which was really cool to see. Yeah, so it absolutely does work on an iPad. Cool. And that's one of the, ex sorry, Jacob. So I was just going to quickly say uh, on equipment um, that we did have an issue at the start where the computers issued centrally from NHS England to vaccination sites. We see they're quite restricted in terms of the websites you can visit where you couldn't use any of AccuBook. That was resolved a few weeks ago. But if you do have any problems accessing AccuBook, any part of it, um, on those computers, uh, please do let us know and we'll raise that with NHS Digital to get that resolved for your site. But that should you should be able to access all parts of the product on, on those systems. 
Sorry, Matt, I cut across you. That's okay. Um, so I'm just conscious that we're, we're coming to the end of our session. Um, we've got about five more minutes and I know that Michael and Shankar have um, uh, meetings to rush off to um, straight away after this. So um, I just wanted to give you two like any other uh, uh, the floor for any other final thoughts if, if you would like don't feel the pressure to um, but also if you do need to kind of drop off I just want to say thank you now um, from all of us we really appreciate you joining um, so uh, yeah if but if you're happy to hang on till one we can we can continue the, the Q&A um, yeah uh, I, I think that question about I, iPads is actually um, uh, interesting for how, how you're using AccuBook on the day I think Shankar you had some great uh, uh, slides in your uh, presentation about what what people are, uh, are doing with it um, in your centers. Um, do you, yeah, would you like to say, say a bit more about uh, that and how it's working for you or if, or if you hit, hit um, some of the issues that Jacob was describing? Um, you're talking about the use of AccuBook um, in the centers. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like any change management um, when they're used to system one and going to a different product. Um, it's, um, it's always a change. What I would say is that there's been minimal training purely because it's a shift pattern. And it's, it's, yeah, there may be a little bit of bumps, but it's, your product is relatively simple and um, the basics are easy to, to, to do. Um, the Arrive system, particularly entering that search functionality has made a big difference. It's quicker. Um, Mike's QR codes, and I appreciate that AccuTrack may change all of that, that we may not need his codes, but that also helps a lot. So it's speeded up things. Um, some, of the, some of the nuances around counselling, rebooking sessions, that's obviously a little bit more um, complicated at the beginning to explain to new staff, but it's, um, we're in week one and it's not had any major hiccups. <laughs> yeah, the, the approach that we use for the cancelling of patients off cancelling their invite. So one of the common scenarios that we experience is a pay, you phone a manual book patient and they don't answer the phone for whatever reason. So then there becomes a bit of an awkward, when do we cancel edit that, that invite off? Obviously, I'd say we try to keep our list as close to zero as possible to make it easy to not to find the people who you now need to phone. So we cancel them off generally after a day or two after once we've given them a chance to phone back after we've left them a voicemail or something like that. Um, again, be able to filter those would be quite a nice extra feature so that we can filter out the people that we've already attempted contact with rather than having to, to kind of go past them and then look into the detail. But again, it, it's, it, it's nice that you've innovated so quickly and added the option to add those comments, which has made our process a lot better. And again, also being able to see the telephone numbers for the manual book patients within AccuBook, that's, that allows us not to have to go back and forth between the platforms. Oh, that's great to hear. I really, yeah, and thank you again for that kind of insight into how, how you're using it across, across that spectrum um, uh, and throughout the kind of whole process. So. Um, unless, has anyone spotted, anyone on the panel spotted any questions that they'd like to answer uh, live? I think we've got uh, you and our colleagues at Acurex have been doing a sterling job answering 71 questions so far. Um, there's a couple of open ones. Um, we've covered whether it's going to be an alternative to farmer outcomes, or this is AccuTrack. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's pretty much everything. There's a couple of questions about functionality, um, which one which Kim asked earlier on about um, whether um, the length of appointments in AccuBook. So currently patients are given 10 minute slots um, so that uh, for them to arrive at your sites. And um, that's something to bear in mind, Kim. I, th I, th um, uh, I think that will answer your question. But apart from that, I think we've got through everything. Go on, Michael. The 10, the ten minute slots terrified me initially. And that, that's what I spoke to Jacob about in the early days, because uh, we plan to do obviously a lot more than one patient per 10 minutes, but it hasn't turned out to be a problem at all. We end, we have six or seven, six or eight patients coming every 10 minutes and that, that seems to work fine. Cool. Is that you, you kind of use the functionality to set the throughput? Um, so when people, if people aren't familiar, when you set up clinics, um, you can set essentially the capacity that you have per hour. So the patients all turn up early anyway, so it doesn't matter. Cool. That's really helpful. Um, okay, another thing to think about there. Um, so and I'm going to bring this webinar to an end by thanking you all for joining. Um, I have a thank you uh, slide that I would like to share as well. So um, let me pop that up for you now. Um, so we'd like to say thank you for, for your for joining. If you uh, need any, any more insight into AccuBook as a product, you can go to support.accurex.com and start reading the um, support articles there. We'll post the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel um, at this link um, on Bitly, the AccuRx channel. Um, and then finally, just a message from us to you all, including you, Michael and Shankar, um, who uh, have kindly joined us today. Um, stay safe and thank you for all that you do. 
Um, we'll see you again soon um, and we'll be in touch on email and, and on our Facebook group. So thanks very much. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye.